Welcome to Networking Field Day. The presentation that you are about to watch from Barefoot Networks is being attended by a group of invited networking delegates who represent the community by asking questions, offering opinions, and discussing the technology that you are about to see. If you would like to see more information about this event, please go to our website, techfieldday.com, and check out our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash techfieldday. So for the demo, for the next demo, I'm going to show you a, a very simple example uh, where P4 uh, is in action, right? The example is based on a very common scenario. So you have a customer that requires a very large IP table. Uh, he wants to keep the full routing table, but he wants to maximize that. Tofino can support more than a million routes, right? So it's 1.3 million. Uh, and uh, basically, that's not a problem. So the customer will go for that specific profile that allows him to use these large IP tables. But then he finds that he actually needs additional statistics for these routes. And uh, in the original profile, there were no counters that it could use to monitor these routes, so packets that are being, uh, that are selecting specific prefixes. So with P4, the cast, what we are going to show, the customer will be able to incrementally add this new feature, new functionality, which is statistics for these IP route tables. And this is a C, very simple P4 change. No hardware upgrade is required, right? If you were to go to a traditional approach that uses a fixed function ASIC, you will basically select a new vendor that supports that functionality, and that goes, right? You know, the hardware upgrade takes a very long time. So let's go and uh, what are we looking at here? So we have built for convenience, we have built like a UI, so you don't have to go and type commands, but what this UI represents are all the configurable features and tables that you have in Switch P4. Switch P4 is our open source version of the libraries that we provide to uh, customers uh, that want to start with P4, right? So you have things from uh, IPv4 tables, IPv6 table, MPLS tables and so on, right? And, uh, and the system is set in a way that, you know, is tuned to the baseline for that profile. And you could, if you want, uh, if you wanted, just tune and change that baseline profile. So let's focus on our use case and uh, let's see how we can uh, look at uh, our, you know, IPv4. So if, you, if we go back, and then look at the use case here. So we have a big IPv4 table. So we have like 1.3 million routes presently you know, available for the customer on this uh, instance of the chip. But there are no counters, no statistics, right? So what I can do here uh, is just verify that. Um, what are you looking at right now is a development environment. Is uh, the P4 developer will get access to what is called a software developer environment, and uh, that software developer environment allows him to get access to the P4 programs and libraries, get access to the compiler, right, so he can compile this program against a, a Tofino target. And we also have a very basic uh, CLI that he can use to test for a few things on the chip. So I'm basically typing a command here, and uh, I'm verifying how many routes do I have in this, and as you can see, I have in this instance of the Tofino chip, uh, 1.3 million rounds, right? I don't have any stats at this point. So this is as simple as basically, okay, let me go back and change that. I like to get about 300K stats maybe. I'm okay because the full routing table, you know, anyway, it's like, you know, not as big as uh, 1 million rounds. So I can live with 1 million rounds and about 300K uh, counters. So when I do that and I press compile, this kicks the compilation of the P4 program using the P4 compiler that we provide as part of the SDE toolkit. So as we speak, this is a real time, this will compile, right? And you will see the compilation will be about a minute. Is this compiling on the switch itself? This is compiling right now. Uh, it's compiling the binary that will be pushed, pushed on the, the switch. switch. Right. Yeah. Okay. 
directly on the switch. Right. You know, yeah. it could be offline in your compute farm, just like yeah. you compile on right. a server. So, so that number right there, that's that's number of routes in the fib. Those are your actual, you know, forwarding routes. So if I'm learning, I'm taking in four tables across four disparate, you know, upstreams. That's not a, a hit against you because it's what's actually going to the fib. Is that yeah? A that's fair correct. It, yeah, just to be clear, that's it's not what's just in the software OS. It's actually loaded onto the hardware on the chip. Okay. You're, you're talking on the chip. You know, 1.3 million entries. You know, on the chip. Okay. Exactly. So. Um, so basically, you know, why we talk, you know, the compilation is going, I'm just giving you an example uh, of a very simple feature that I can have here. But, you know, another feature, and by the way, the compilation just completed here, right? I could take this example in different direction. I could add a new feature. I could add a new encapsulation. Uh, when at and built this eVPN solution, they basically wrote a, a P4 program and compiled that P4 program allocating the right resources for the tables that they wanted to use, right? So <clears throat> at this point, uh, I have completed the compilation. I, I pushed this program in my data plane. So I will basically, uh, with that push, program the switch uh, according to the new tables, right? And I will be able, I mean, if I wanted to change this later on, I could even, you know, do multiple iteration, okay? I actually need some more counters and so on. So if I go back in the, and I issue my CLI route summary, now, as you can see, uh, we have about 980K IP routes on the chip, and we have about 300, 330K uh, route counts for, for these IP fib routes. So it took like, literally like a couple of minutes to do this, right? Very simple, very easy. No disruption to the data plane. No disruption to forwarding. Correct. Right. That depends Whereas on, do uh, it depends on uh, what you do. But if you have done the sizing properly of your tables, right. uh, you could do these incremental changes uh, with no disruption. So some changes are incremental. Some yeah. might need a... Yeah. Correct. Uh, exactly. More, more yeah, I mean, since here you're not really adding a brand new thing that changing the way forwarding yeah. existed, and in this program you had pre-allocated, hey, I was going to have routes mm -hmm. and route counters, you know, there you go. That that could be something that could be done hitlessly. Because I'm thinking you. about current generations of silicon, which force you to reboot the switch. Exactly. And often using various in arcane incantations to, right. you know, re re to carve the TCAMs. Correct. To different architectures. Yeah. yeah, rebooting the switch definitely will be disruptive. But mm. think about, you know, if you have a, a version of that fixed function silicon that mm. does not support yeah. uh, Geneve or VXLAN and routing at yes. the same yes. time. Yeah. I'm just I thinking mean, about TCAM carving at the moment. Correct, right. Yeah. So then in that case, you, need, you really need to wait for that hardware to support that feature. That is even longer, as Nick was yes. pointing out, an even longer life cycle sure. kind of quest. 